Hello, everybody. Uh, first of all, thank you besides for having me here. Uh, I appreciate this opportunity. This is my first international conference, but I'm never very nervous. Um, sorry because about my English, I don't know if you understand something that I will say here, but I'm here. Okay, today uh, I'm going to talk about Windows Event Log and Persistent, and how you can use the Windows to create a, some persistent and exploit uh, some vulnerabilities, okay? Okay, about me. Uh, my name is Fabrício Jimenez. Uh, I have 11 years old with offensive security. Um, I have some certification that uh, I, I don't like exactly certification, but I have OSCP, OSWE, uh, CRTP. Uh, also, I spoke in some conference in Brazil. Brazil is a very good place. If you visit Brazil, let me know. I can help you uh, look around a uh, good, good uh, place here, or good place there, sorry. Uh, besides Sao Paulo, woohoo! No Bites, uh, ATC uh, Echo Party. This is my LinkedIn, it's my Twitter. Um, disclaimer, uh, nothing I can say here uh, represent my company. Um, that all shit I will say represent is my responsibility, that's okay? Yeah, uh, let me explain about this. In Brazil, uh, it's very common you, the company, use some talk uh, to, to block uh, the employees during the, 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 the talk. And then we, uh, the, the company maybe obligation was put this in, inside the talk. Uh, the motivation. Um, my motivation about this talk, um, I love some, f some techniques like um, privilege escalation and domain admin, principal in those environments. Um, and then during one internal engagement to Red Team, I found a lot of vulnerability in Windows uh, environment, uh, but I, I found a difficult uh, way to exploit and to create in some persistent and again, um, local administrators, something like that. Um, about agenda, uh, I will talk about uh, attack, uh, red team attack simulation, PowerShell constellation language mode, uh, custom running space and recall. Uh, this is a good feature that Microsoft created um, to help a blue team for improve the security environment. Practical uh, privilege escalation. What the privilege escalation? Our installer elevated and a new approach. Um, practical persistent. This is my preference techniques during the red team engagement. What the persistent and the Windows event log. Okay. Um, before uh, I start my talk, I, I would like to talk about uh, the some phases during the red team engagement. Um, my main goal here is explain about the recon. Recon is very good techniques and very good important techniques that we have during the red team engagement. Because during the recon uh, techniques, we can found a lot of vulnerability and a lot of misconfiguration that we can exploit them. Uh, after that, the local privilege escalation is another good technique that we can uh, look around uh, because, as you know, during the red team engagement or print testing, we need uh, some user that, the, that have a uh, high privilege to do something that we cannot do with normal user. And to finally, we have the persistent techniques. Uh, this is a good thing. During the persistent technique, do we have, um, okay, b before I explain this, in a lot of Windows environments, we have some ADR. The ADR is uh, like a crowd strike or something like uh, ADR. Um, the block created some persistence. It's very important to you look around this because when you create some persistence uh, with, for example, a Windows Tasks list, uh, Windows Defender or crowd strike block this. And then in these techniques, I will uh, use the new approach. Uh, Windows event log to create a new persistence uh, that the Windows Defender and the CrowdStrike won detectable these techniques is very important. Okay, let's talk about uh, constellation language mode. 
it's, it's very complicated to do all of this. Okay, uh, as I mentioned before, the constellation language mode, the Microsoft created the constellation language mode, I don't know how much years ago, but uh, this is very good feature that Microsoft created. This feature help a lot of blue team uh, and the uh, admin or whatever to protect PowerShell environment. And then when the Microsoft created this feature, Microsoft look around, okay, uh, I will create this feature to help some people. And I, my intention here is block wrong people executed bad script or wrong script inside of the PowerShell. Uh, in this case, in the constellation languages, there are three different types, different types in constellation language mode. The first type is full language mode. What means full language mode? Full language mode means that you can execute it, uh, whatever you want inside the PowerShell, and then you can uh, create a reverse shell, we can create um, persistence, we can write the I'm hacker, and then the PowerShell does block you. Uh, the second type have in, in constellation language mode is, uh, is constellation language mode. What means this? Uh, this feature um, does block you write uh, something in PowerShell, but we can write a specific thing inside of the PowerShell. <coughs> Other, the, the, the last one we have is restriction language mode. The restriction language mode block all the people, all the PowerShell script that you, you want to uh, execute this. Okay, um, there are many ways to enable the constellation, the constellation language mode, but um, here uh, I have two different, uh, uh, one type that you can use for enable this feature. Uh, the first one, as we can see here, uh, we have uh, just uh, executing the script in, in PowerShell to check if you have some blocks, okay? And then, as you can see here, we have uh, full language mode. What means this? This uh, means that uh, I can write everything inside the PowerShell. If I want to uh, enable the constellation language mode, I can just write this string inside the PowerShell, okay? And uh, with this word, constellation language mode. After that, uh, if you execute the same script, the PowerShell return the constellation, constellation language mode is enabled. And then, if I write, I'm a hacker, the PowerShell block me, okay? Uh, but this uh, is the problem. This is fast, uh, this is easy way to enable the constellation, constellation language mode. But when you open the new session in PowerShell, uh, we can bypass this because uh, the constellation the, this feature, sorry, uh, this feature just uh, working in the session, PowerShell. If you open a new session, we can bypass this. Okay, uh, in my opinion, uh, in, and then in, during my researching, I found a different ways to enable this feature. Uh, in my opinion, this way is a better way, okay? We can open uh, app lock, to enable this feature, uh, and then we can create an, uh, this rule here. Deny PSE, PS1, sorry, about PowerShell. What means this? Uh, this means that you can block uh, all script that you need uh, executed in PowerShell, okay? Other way to enable the constellation language mode is uh, through regedit. The regular DT is a good, good way, in my opinion. This will work for me. And then we can create a key environment. And then we can put inside this, this key with five, uh, uh, four, sorry. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> a little explanation about uh, run space. Uh, I don't know if uh, everybody here know about the uh, run space. The run space is a uh, very good technique that Microsoft uh, 
implemented inside the PowerShell. Uh, the run space will work in, together with the PowerShell. And then if you open a PowerShell session behind the PowerShell, um, the run space will work in to execute some script. And then I will use the run space to bypass the constructional language mode, OK? Uh, there are two different types of uh, run space. The first type is local run space. This is our case, okay? Because this, uh, uh, during my engagement, uh, um, I use the physical uh, machine. The other type has is remote run space. This is, uh, for the ones, is not important because I use just a, a local run space to bypass something that's how you want. Okay, um, I'm not a developer, okay, but my script is working. Uh, in Brazil, you, we can uh, name uh, Frankstein. The Frankstein is the script that you created to help you during the, your engagement. Uh, this, case, this script, uh, I, I created this script with C Sharp. C Sharp is very good language, you know? Um, and then, the first thing that I created was console right line, the Pudin can, uh, the Pudin user can be do everything that you want. I love the Pudin, the Pudin is very delicious uh, dessert have in Brazil, he's have too. And then after that, uh, I will call some uh, .NET uh, application to install my script. And after install my script, I use another uh, type to one install. This is very important during my 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 proof of concept because I don't use external tools. I just use .NET tools. Okay. And then um, <clears throat> okay, why? How I can uh, execute some script, some bad script, or some payloads? without the Defender blocking my execution, or without the CrowdStrike block this. Um, the first thing that you can do here is um, bypass the MSI. This is important. And then I created the first string. The first string uh, called the remote machine that they are uh, MSI bypass. After that, I use the power up. The power up is very good tool and powerful tool that help us um, to do something inside the the machine. And after that, I create another string to bypass um, to elevate the privilege uh, and uh, open the new session with uh, local administrator. And here I call the one space. Uh, as I mentioned before, the one space is important technique that we can uh, execute it here. And then uh, I will call the first string FGP01, FGP02, and FGP03. OK, uh, as I mentioned before in my begin this talk, I use the constellation language mode okay, to uh, execute my recall and look around some techniques or some vulnerability that I have inside the machine to uh, create um, private escalation and create a new user or open a new session with local administrator, okay? In this case, as we can see, uh, I use the cert to encode my payload, okay? And then I encode my payloads like a certification. Uh, after that, I use the the command inside the windows, the bit admin. The bit admin is powerful tool to transfer my payload encoder in my remote machine. And I will save this payload in task encode.exe. Uh, after that, I use the search to decode this, save in Windows task. Uh, why I save my script in Windows task? In majority of cases, the ADR or Defender don't look around in Windows tasks, just to look around uh, different uh, uh, folders. And then, uh, okay, I, I save my encode.txt 
txt and after I save you with exe bypass and I use the .NET to install without log to install my um, payload. Okay, previous escalation, our installer elevator and new approach. I don't know if you um, know about this, this vulnerability. This old vulnerability, approximately, approximately 10 years ago. Uh, but I, I found a new approach to elevated privilege escalation with these techniques. Okay, but what is the privilege escalation? Everybody know about the privilege escalation here, but there are different types of uh, privilege escalation. In my opinion, uh, Windows privilege escalation is more uh, so sophisticated and technique that we can uh, use and then we can exploit this. Hours elevate installers. Uh, what means water elevate while well, hours elevate installer? Uh, hours elevate installer means that we can uh, install MSI program inside the Windows with high previous, previous um, user. Uh, what means this? Uh, this means that we can install the program or whatever you want with uh, administrator or you can create a local administrator and put this use in local administrator group, okay? Okay, as I mentioned before, uh, I will use a new approach for this. Uh, there are one approach, the older approach in Metapreter. Metapreter, there are one payload that you can use for creating MSI program and install this, but I use Wix file. Wix file is like a XML file that you can create and can modify something that you want inside of this file. And then in my case here, I just, uh, um, <clears throat> yeah, I just uh, created a new set, a new PowerShell session, okay? This is XML file. And then I open the new PowerShell session with a local administrator, okay? Okay, what persistence? Uh, this is very good techniques, I love this, because uh, during the writing uh, engagement, uh, you, we can return our environment to do something that we cannot do in less time that we have uh, do. Okay, uh, let me explain here one thing. Uh, during my, my research, I, I found a lot of uh, different techniques that create uh, persistence. But in my opinion, when you're creating some persistence, for example, Windows Test List or Regadit, something like that, the Defender or CrowdStrike can block you. And then, in this case, Defender don't look around uh, Windows, uh, Windows Event Log. The ADR don't, look, uh, don't block something inside this, okay? Um, Windows event log. Uh, I will explain here about uh, Windows event log. Everybody here know about this, but I will explain what different between uh, event log and application event log. The Windows event log is, uh, the Microsoft created this to uh, create some, uh, if you execute some, some command inside the PowerShell or SAMD, they normally create a new event, okay? But uh, Windows application event log is different, okay? For you create some Windows event application log, you need uh, administrator, local administrator to do this. And then this is my uh, approach, okay? I use my last Previous escalation to create a persistent inside the Windows application log. Okay, Windows, uh, Windows event log conceptual tool. 
Why I choose uh, <coughs> Windows Application Log? W Windows Application Log, they are uh, a lot of fields inside this. Uh, the first field have uh, log key, source, date time, event ID, task category, level, computer, and event data. Uh, event data in, in our case is very important because I use event data to uh, create my shell code and create my reverse shell, okay? Oh, oh yeah. Uh, <clears throat> okay, after uh, I executed my recon, I executed my previous escalation, uh, I have a local administrator, and then I can create an, a new application, Windows application event log with my uh, shell code. First, I create my event log, the event log name POC Pudin, source Pudin, all the things. After that, I created uh, the shell code with MS Heveno, with X uh, format. Here as my payload, and then I need uh, create. I need I need to put this shell code inside the Windows application log, and then I use the hash byte, and they replace some uh, bad characters that Microsoft that uh, uh, Metaplot created for me, and then after that I write um, my shell code inside the raw data. Okay, the number event ID is. Uh, this is my this number. The whole data is called the hash byte array. Sorry, I'm nervous. Okay, uh, after creating uh, Windows application log, I need to call this application log. This is Windows uh, Windows event application log, and I need to execute my shell code inside this uh, Windows application log. Uh, as I mentioned before, I'm not a developer, and I create another script to help me. Uh, this script call uh, my event log, okay? After that, uh, <coughs> this script call POC Pudin. This is my last event log I created. And then I need to read the whole data field. Um, and then I, here I create the string to uh, read this whole data. And of course, I need to use some uh, Windows API, create thread, write, uh, yeah, write thread, and virtual lock. This is common API in Windows. That's uh, ADR look around this API. And uh, a lot of Defender, for example, or CrowdStrike look around this API because this is very dangerous. For, for for the windows okay <clears throat> let's go talk all the things Okay, here we show uh, about the constellation language mode. As we can see here, we have uh, the constellation language mode enabled. I'm a hacker. The, the constellation language mode block this uh, line. <coughs> uh, here I use the search to, to, to encode my payload, okay?
Okay, here I use the bit admin to transfer my external payload to local machine. Okay, I need to wait. Yeah, uh, here, let me. Okay, here we go, yeah, here. Uh, as we can see here, we have encode, payload, MSI bypass, and power up. After some minutes, we have the recon result. As we can see here, we have our elevate installer vulnerable. Here we go. Uh, here we have a new session with uh, local administrator, user. I created a new application event log, uh, putting all the things with my shell code. Yeah, this is important. As we can see, we have the Fender enabled here. And the Fender is a beautiful ADR, Microsoft Creator, but one fourthly. The meta session. Okay, important, uh, yeah, important. <clears throat> During my research, I created a task, Windows task, uh, because I want to execute this same script during 10 minutes or uh, five minutes, okay? I have a shell. Here I am nervous, I, I write shell, but I need to open the session first. Okay. Thank you. This is my uh, officer LinkedIn, official LinkedIn. If you want to talk with me. All right. If you have some question, please let me know. Any questions? Cool. Uh, 
um, you, you're writing the shell code to a event log. Most event logs are set up to eventually be deleted when they're, they're filled up with other events. Is that a good idea? That's where you're getting, where you're placing your persistence. Sorry, um, I'm not to hear you very well. Can you repeat, please? Yeah, um, you're putting a shell code in an in an event. Yeah, right. And normally, event logs are set up to only have a certain amount of space. When they fill up with events, your your event will be deleted. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> in this case, I I want to, I I create the I put the shell code inside the the Windows application log, and if you want to create another event, you can create another event with your another name. And then you can put your shell codes inside them again. I don't know if you, uh, I understand correct or question, but uh, this is it, sorry, okay? More question? Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks.